Uh, we welcome our viewers here in Nigeria and around the world. This is your business morning with me, Bosin Omofaye. Let's get the show started on this note. South Africa's top trade negotiator, Wamkele Mene, has been appointed the pioneer secretary general of the new Africa Continental Free Trade Area, AFCFTA, with headquarters in Accra, Ghana. The announcement was made overnight at the African Union conference or summit going on in Addis Ababa. In the news over the last couple of uh, days is Nigeria's rail infrastructure with some of the uh, coaches being moved from Lagos to various locations where they will be assembled. Nigeria's Minister of Transportation, uh, Honorable Roti Miyamichi, has spent some time over the last few weeks speaking variously about why these rail projects are very important and how they could be an economic game changer for Nigeria. But there are a few concerns around this commercial and cargo rails and where they will become uh, viable in order for Nigeria to pay back the various local and foreign borrowings which we're using to build these rails. So let's get a bit of a business sector perspective into this with Muda Yusuf, who is the Director General and Chief Executive Officer of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industries live with us here in our studios. Thank you, Mr. Yusuf. Thank you very much. <clears throat> it's good to see you. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. My apologies. So, uh, I'm sure you've, you've read in the news that the, the coaches are moving uh, to location. And from all indications, it looks like the administration is uh, moving forward despite uh, um, uh, revenue shortfalls to get the real infrastructure up and running. Are you encouraged by some of the things you're reading in the news uh, in recent days and weeks? Of course, we are excited about it. Because we know that uh, <clears throat> domestic connectivity has been a major problem for the economy. Uh, we know what kind of uh, damage, uh, what kind of uh, issues we have been having with uh, transportation within the country. We know the fact that uh, they have the fact that we have so many trucks moving from a papa through, you know, from the uh, papa ports to you know, middle beds to up north and all of that. So all of these things have been a major productivity issue <coughs> for the Nigerian economy. So this development is something that is exciting. Uh, we also expect that because I know that there is a lot of focus on ensuring that this rail also extends to the port. Uh, we know the kind of challenges we have been facing with the port, port congestion, having to evacuate cargo from the port and all of that. So if we're able to take the cargo off the road, to the, to, to, to the, to the rail, uh, rail system. I think that will bring a lot of relief. It will bring relief in terms of you know, how much we spend on the roads, uh, the amount of road accidents that we have, uh, the you know, cost of uh, transportation, and all of that. So it's going to bring quite a lot of relief. But what is important in all of this is the issue of sustainability. Uh, you talk about the issue of the commercial viability and all of that. In infrastructure financing, I think it is always important to decouple the various components of infrastructure, even within the rail system. Uh, we should identify... How, how do you mean? Yes, we should identify those components of it that are bankable, the component that government has to finance. You know, it is important now, I mean, we have seen a major investment in laying the tracks. I believe at this point we should be looking at how we can get the private sector to get involved in terms of providing the, the coaches, running the system, providing the locomotive, and all, a whole lot of things like that. Because- so why do you think <clears throat> the private sector is not, uh, they're not coming forward as they should? Well, I think it's a question of first, the political will has to be there. Secondly, the framework has to be there. Thirdly, there has to be the confidence because infrastructure investment is a long-term investment. And this environment is also noted for the high risk, you know, that, that comes with it. And uh, we also know the experience of those who have gone into PPP investment with government. So all these issues need to be dealt with. If you have the right kind of regulatory framework, if you reduce the level of uncertainty in this economy, if you're able to inspire the confidence of investors around all of these things, and you treat investors well, 
if you have proper dispute resolution system, the contractual, I mean, respect for contractual agreements and all of that, I mean, we'll be able to attract investment. Because if you look at the infrastructure master plan, total investment that is required annually to fill infrastructure gap in Nigeria is about $100 billion annually. The total federal government budget is less than $30 billion. The component of that that is into capital expenditure is just about $8 billion. And out of the capital expenditure, the amount that is going to transportation, rail, and, and, and road transport is just about $3 billion. You know? So there's a huge financing gap that we are dealing with here. And unless we are able to deal with that, it will be difficult to actually transform this economy. It will be difficult to achieve this objective of the federal government or the president saying that you want to leave people out of poverty, 100 million people out of poverty in, in, in 10 years. Well, well, in terms of the, the <clears throat> business sector, uh, you're, you're in charge at the LCCI. Yes. So if you, uh, I'm sure for a Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I'm sure you have uh, numbers, uh, members variously in various sectors, and yeah. I'm sure a number of them sure. will be in logistics, in, in shipping, sure. and all of that. So you... Uh, you have an ear to the ground yeah. as to what their thinking is about this rail infrastructure yeah. uh, uh, between commercial and cargo yeah. rail business. The 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 Honorable Minister uh, Michi says the uh, subsidy which is currently being provided for rail transport uh, commercial rail uh, is not sustainable. You can't do that for cargo, so it has to be risk and reward. Yeah. Uh, but the administration, therefore, seems to be caught in a, uh, in a corner here as to how to build something that is socially and politically correct. Uh, at the same time, it has to be, it has to be commercially viable. Yeah. Uh, so how do you think the government will be able to move forward here because we don't have the time? The, uh, uh, the Chinese, whom we have deals with and some borrowings to build the race, the clock is ticking as when we're going to pay back uh, this money. You see... No matter how we look at it, it will still be cheaper, even if we are adopting a purely commercial model to run the rail system. It will still be cheaper to transport cargo through the rail than by road. I mean, we know the experience that investors have been going through in the last, in the last couple of years. Even to move a cargo from Lagos ports to Agbara, some people have said it's even more expensive than bringing the cargo from China to Lagos. It's as bad as that. So if we get the rail investment right, particularly the tracks, first, I'm confident that it will be easy to get investors to drive the, the remaining of the process. In terms of providing even the coaches. As far as I'm concerned, the government may not even need to bother about going to buy coaches and all of that. The track is the biggest component of the investment. Is the biggest area of risk in terms of people I and mean, investors bringing money. Once we're able to do that, we should be able to get the private sector to take it up from there. What about running it? Uh, the report for 2018, 2019 was that it, it, it cost about 100 million. Uh, sorry, uh, the, the Abuja Kaduna Rail made a revenue of 100 million, but it cost about 80 million naira uh, to run it because it's powered by diesel or uh, whatever. So, what is about the cost of running it? You, you said the rail is the major component, yes. But what about running it? Running it can be very viable, in my view. I mean, I listened to the minister where he said even they cannot even meet the demand in terms of the passenger traffic even between Abuja and Kaduna. So that shows you the potential of, in terms of business that you have in there. And this is, I mean, then that's it, a commercial route. Yes. Yeah, yes. So the, yes. The, 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 the fares are not as going to be as competitive as, as it should be. Across the country. How many years will it take? Across the country, I, I can tell you that given the population of this country mm. and given the challenges that we have faced with our road networks, moving passengers, moving cargo by rail will be commercially viable. You look, I, I believe so. You're looking at Lagos, for example, to the southeast. Lagos to the southeast, Lagos to the, the north, south, south. Lagos to south. I mean, there's a lot of connectivity problem. And if you have an efficient rail system, and that is what happens all over the world anyway, we have a population of 200 million people. People need to move around. I've been talking about the economic integration of the sub-region, of the, of the African continent. 
We are not talking about integration of even the domestic economy. And for, for that to happen, you need an efficient rail system. You need our own AFCFTA. Exactly. Indigenous <laughs> exactly. AFC, AFCFTA. You know, and that's with crash prices. I mean, look at the food inflation. Food inflation has consistently been very high over, 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 over the years. It's a major driver of the high level of inflation that because we have. Because of logistics. Because of logistics. So if you're able to get that working, that can even bring down inflation. It will bring down costs. It will make the economy more efficient. It will make the economy more competitive. Because logistics cost is huge. I mean, look at the cost of diesel. All these trucks that you see moving around, all these luxury, but they are all running on diesel. Diesel is not cheap. So these are some of the reasons that you have an economy that is not competitive. We are talking about going to AFCTA in a, in a few months' time. We can't, we can't be competitive with this kind of cost of logistics. So, because we need to move products from one part of the country to the other. So technically the... speaking, uh, EFCFTA in July, so they have a new um, uh, <coughs> Secretary General, a 40-year-old man. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that sounds very good. Very uh, good. I discussed yeah. that with my team this morning. Mm -hmm. I said, well, we'll have a 40-year-old man because uh, for a new arrangement like the EFCFTA has got to hold a lot of meetings yeah. and discussions and all that, so he needs all the strength. Uh, that uh, uh, the youth, uh, youthful life brings to the table. But again, uh, speaking specifically to how we function and how we move forward here, like I said, we need to put a few things in. So if we need to move cargo across the Western Corridor, we're trying to build roads. I'm not sure we're done with that very well, the highway. We're trying to build rail. Uh, I'm not sure we haven't, we've started that at all. So do you think some of our energy and resources should now continue to be, uh, be, be, uh, be shifted a little bit toward that, uh, uh, this projects as well, not just within the country, because whether we like it or not, we we'll need to move. We need to move. But what is most important in terms of competitiveness, whether regionally, continentally, or globally, is for you to be able to produce you know, efficiently within the economy first. Because we are discussing infrastructure here. Rail infrastructure is just one component of transport infrastructure. You have the aviation infrastructure. You have the waterways. You, know, you have the road. You have the railways. You have the ports. These are very important components of transport infrastructure. We need to make these systems efficient. And it is not all about money. It's also about policy. It's also about confidence that you give to those who have the money to put their money on the table. So these are the things we should be looking at. I mean, we also have issues with ICT infrastructure. The telcos have been struggling with many state governments for so many years to just get right of way, to be able to lay their, their fiber cables, to promote the internet connectivity across the country. It has been a nightmare for all these telcos. They have the resources, they are ready to do it, but the political will, and the kind of cost that some of the states are demanding are horrendous. So how do you move an economy forward that way? You know? Then we have also issues with infrastructure around the, even the, the, the industries, creating industrial parks, processing zones. Yeah, I was just about to ask zones. that. You if know, all, we, we get all the, the, the rails in place, where are the goods uh, by your members? The goods will come. I mean, people are struggling, even in spite of all the challenges that we face at the moment. People are producing. But it's just that the cost of production is high. That is why I'm worried about you know, our readiness even for this July AFCTA thing. Because there's a readiness report that was presented to the president. There are a whole lot of recommendations on what will make us ready for ready, the AFCTA. Ready as in practically ready. Practically ready to be part of the, of the deal, of, 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 of the AFCTA. All those recommendations, nothing concrete has happened in terms of, I mean, just take the readiness Cross, Crossing the T's and dotting the I's. This is beyond even crossing the T's. Some of the recommendations are things that are very fundamental, which even borders on some of these structural issues that we are talking about. I mean, how do you go into this kind of business when you still have all these issues with your infrastructure? So as far as services sector is concerned, we are probably ready because the infrastructure demand of services is not as huge. But as far as the real economy is concerned, it's going to be quite challenging. So the earlier we 
fix all of these things that are contained in the reports of the committee set up by the president to ensure that we are ready for this, the better for everybody. Uh, is LCC following up on some of those things? Well, we are following up, but we are just praying that it doesn't end up like under Brexit. Because the moment we step into it, if there are too many issues, there may be complaints about it, especially for those in the real sector of the economy. You know? So we need to look at all, the, all of these things holistically. We need to deal with the infrastructure issues. We need to deal with policy issues. We need to attract investors. Uh, technically, you know? do you think we are ready for July EFCFTA? Maybe partially, but I'm not confident that those in production are ready for it. Because nothing has changed. All the fears that were expressed by manufacturers at the very beginning concerning the issue of our participation, whether they were consulted or not, all the issues that were raised, practically nothing has been addressed. If anything, I mean, we are seeing new taxes and all of that, you know, so it's a major challenge. Okay. Uh, it's the, it's the uh, 11th of February. Let's, uh, we still have about six months to go. Okay. Maybe. We have to be optimistic and, and positive about it. Optimistically yes. speaking. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Muda Yusuf, the Director General and Chief Executive Officer at the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry.